Okay, so through some magical form of time-lapse video and digital recording, um, we're done. And I'm trying to find a good angle to show this to you so you can see the highlights and the lowlights. So I had to set up the light over there, fourth wall break, uh, so you can see the difference in the shading and the paneling based on how the light is actually reflecting off the surface. Okay, so you can see that we have this perimeter here, right? And then this circle detail. I'm gonna bring it up close. Let's see if I can get that right. Focus. Okay, so you can see that embossed detail. And we're gonna try and add a texture in the perimeter here. So we don't affect our, our design detail and we don't really encroach on our perimeter detail, but we have some sort of textural element. So when we go to paint it, if we want to do highlights and lowlights, um, those show up effectively. So as we do this process, water. I know you're shocked, right? That you would need water for vegetable tan leather. Yes, it's everywhere. So when you have a golf ball, it's got all these little pits in it. Um, don't ask me where I got this. I don't know. I think either my dog found it back when I had a dog or I stole it from somewhere. I'm going to blame the dog. So the golf ball's got all these pits in the texture. And you can translate that to the leather by just applying pressure. You can't just, you know, roll it softly. You really got to lean into it. So um, I'm going to have to stand up for this. And then as I roll, I'm going to put my face down there to make sure I'm not rolling texture into an area that I um, spent a fair amount of time embossing. So we want to get that textural element to show up strongly, but we don't want to carry it over to any of the designs that we've spent so much time working to create. Okay, so this, this texture I like because it's easy to make and it looks kind of like a lizard skin or, you know, an old, old warty animal hide, like maybe an ostrich or a warthog or, you know, something that has really coarse hair that you can pluck. But you really gotta lean into this. So if you don't weigh 100 pounds, um, maybe, or I guess if you don't weigh more than 100 pounds, maybe find one of your friends or relatives or family members that is heavy enough to do it. And um, you know, if you've got hand cramps, oh my God, this, uh, this does wonders for my hand cramps. When you're forging all the time, your hand is just <laughs> smashing things. And so I find this oddly therapeutic, disturbingly therapeutic, um, just to get the designs into the areas where I need it most. So it's always good to check and make sure there aren't spots you missed, because the last thing you want to find out is you spend all this time rolling it out, and then it dries out, and you're ready to do some other stuff, and oh, guess what? It got, uh, got moved again. So... Um, the disadvantage here is if you slip with like your fingernail or a blunt object, you can make denting and marring in the leather. The advantage to that is if you're doing something like cosplay, um, battle damage, right? That's what you're going for. So I just try to get low and make sure I can see that I have impressions everywhere that I want impressions to be. And again, it's really about putting a lot of heavy pressure in as you do that rolling motion. It's not so much about moving fast so much as just pressing down hard in a nice continuous roll. So let's wipe that off and hopefully we'll be able to show off some of that texture. So if you look in the highlights and lowlights you can see this subtle texture here. Let's see if I can bring it to the camera. Come on, camera. I believe in you. There we go. So you can see we've got some of those textural elements. As I bend the curve, it can be a little more obvious in some, some flashes and less in others. If I can get the lighting to behave. There we go. So you can see that kind of reptilian texture happening here. 
and at the top of the crest, and in this large section here, and on the perimeter, this edge, I would give it a little more. So while it's still wet, just that one region, a little area where we missed it, and again, lots of pressure, lots of downward pressure. All right, so that should do it. We have our pauldron, and it has a texture that you can't really see from a distance, but as we get up close, there it is. You can see those high gloss textures. And when you go to paint it, that's gonna be a little more obvious. When you go to dye it, it's gonna be a little more obvious. So at this point, um, if you want, you can take a carving tool and do a relief and carve out this border to make it more pronounced and carve out this border and these borders to make it more pronounced. Or you can stop here and then we can do the forming step. Um, we'll probably cover both because then you can just decide, well, I don't want to do that step. It looks like more work. I saw a time lapse in it. Um, generally, when you're watching a video, if you see a time lapse, just know you're committing like a half hour to an hour to do that. And uh, you'll always see I've got headphones on so I can listen to a book or some music while I do some mindless activity. Okay, so there you go. We did the shaping, forming, textural element for the template. And uh, just a reminder, this was our master. You'll notice that it got so degraded that it was actually falling apart.